Jaden Ironman is a four-time All-American, five-time national qualifier, who's been one of the top D1 college wrestlers in recent history, and he's, he'll definitely go down as an all-timer. Not only did he dominate while he was at Mizzou, being the only college wrestler to beat Yanni Diakamahalas, who has been on a win streak since that time, but he then transferred to Iowa to help them secure an NCAA team title as he made the national finals. And now that his college career is over, I want to sit down and ask him what life has been like and maybe what's next. Welcome to the show tonight, Jaden. So how has life been for you over the past couple of months, man? Um, You know, it's just been, you know, trying to rehab um, a lot of getting back to healthy, um, taking the next steps in life that's after college wrestling, like preparing for um, my freestyle career and looking for what's going to go pee on that. But since then, it's just been, you know, working hard in the uh, physical therapy room, um, getting back into the group, uh, you know, uh, back in the group of things um, with college wrestling, rolling around, helping out some of the younger guys um, and then getting in that freestyle club. It's, uh, it's been great so far. Well, that's good to hear that you're rehabbing those injuries that you've been dealing with. I mean, how long, like, I don't know if you want to even talk about that, but like, how long did you have some of those injuries going into nationals? Was it like a nagging type of thing or was it like it happened while you were at nationals? So, um, one of the bigger ones was, I think around New Year's, um, I uh, was in practice wrestling and just my finger got bent back and we thought like it literally kind of bent back all the way and I thought I broke my pinky uh, for a while and so we went in there and we had that my whole hand taped up and I really wasn't able to like get that full grip strength for most of the season and then finally started getting better at, towards the end of the season started getting back in the groove things you know I was sick a couple times but started getting better and better and then the Nebraska duel um, I was in that weird position and my knee popped and mm-hmm. I kind of like it was like oh okay what was that and then I felt good for it continued wrestling got looked at after the match and we thought it was just like a little sprain or something like it's um and then i go back to iowa city the next day and we get an mri and it, it shows that uh, i tore complete my acl and meniscus tear and i was like i'm just gonna you know have to try to tough this out and finish my season like i don't want to go down to my career like that but i'm gonna try to do the best i can and you know see what i could do Jeez, man. Yeah, that that's just, I mean, that's the crazy thing is like, especially during the season, right? All the coaches are like trying to keep a lot of that information like private, right? It's not, it's not like publicly known knowledge because, because then your opponents are out there like trying to go after that. And uh, it, it makes sense why, but yeah. it's like a lot of times, like us fans don't even know what you guys are dealing with behind the scenes with the mm-hmm. nursing those injuries. And it's good that you've been able to to rehab that though at least and uh you know i i'm I'm curious too like other than other than the wrestling other than the training right is there anything like since that time that you've been able to kind of do now that the season had ended like any have you been relaxing a little bit more um, or have you been yeah i'm finally getting to do and like enjoy life a little bit um you know i've been wrestling since i was uh four years old so that's like 22 years now I've been wrestling. Um, and it's always been, you know, part of my life where it's 365. So now I kind of got to like take a little break from it to um, <clears throat> kind of relax, enjoy enjoy the little things, get to go see my family, you know, more often. Um, you know, when wrestling season cooks in for college, you don't get to go see them for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I'm excited to go do that with them this year. Um, kind of still getting back into a group of things. Um Got to go to, you know, some concerts this summer and go see some of my favorite country art artists. Um, so it was real fun to just do that for uh, once and kind of see that and then, you know, get back into where I'm getting better at, uh, you know, healing up and gearing up for my next run for wrestling. Well, that's awesome. I, I'm glad you're able to, you know, relax a little bit too and definitely see your family. You know, that that's, that's the tough part about the the wrestling season is you're right it's, it's thanksgiving christmas i mean the two biggest holidays of the year mm-hmm. and not only do you not get to see your family you're also not able to eat during that time you know or you're because you're cutting back for, for yeah. during the season so it's definitely a little bit rough but what concerts were you, were you able to go to like is, is so you're your big country guy yeah um we went up to country thunder up in wisconsin uh went and saw uh 
it was uh uh who was it morgan wallen um lee bryce uh florida georgia line and then we went into chicago when i was doing a camp with my dad up there and then just so happened to be a concert we i went and saw uh who was it Ah, oh, I'm drawing a blank. Jason Aldean. And that was a great concert too. You know, it's just I got to see one of the some of the artists that I grew up watching my uh listening to my whole life. So it was just good to go and enjoy that with friends. Well, that's great. So one of the things that like I don't think that like we hear enough about, unfortunately, is like the at the academic side of things, right? Because we're obviously like so focused on, on your wrestling career and what's going on there. So I, I'm curious, like you when you transferred to Iowa, that was a graduate transfer, right? What was your what was your degree in, and um, have you graduated since then, like from Iowa? Yeah. And like, yeah. are you like I'm just curious about the academic side. So I got my degree from Missouri. I got it in interpersonal uh, fam, interpersonal relations and family communications, and then I got a minor in psychology and a minor in ASL sign language, and then. When I got to transfer to Iowa, they started they, they passed this new rule where you could start a whole new undergrad again if you wanted to for kids that finished college transferring. So yeah. I started just the new undergrad, uh, going for a new degree, and um, just took my classes, you know, that would let me do that so I could continue wrestling for our, the Hawkeyes. Oh, that's cool. No, that, that's that's really cool that you're able to do that. I think that's one of the, the great things about um, – about yeah. all this stuff, you know, I, I know like a, a lot of times you see like certain people chirping on Twitter about transfers and one time transfer rules and this and that. But I see it as like a really good thing for guys who want to, you know, uh, go to go to different schools. Sure. But mm -hmm. also like there are different schools that are better for certain degrees as well. And I think that really helps out. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I like seeing that. So th that's awesome um, that you're able to to go there. So you talk you mentioned it a little bit. Uh, with your training in, in your freestyle career. So is that kind of what you plan on going into next? Um, I know that's like a lot of the, the biggest question so many people have been asking about, about like, you know, Alex Marinelli and DeSanto and you is like, what's next for you? So you're planning on going freestyle training with the Hawkeye Wrestling Club? Yes. Um, I have my freestyle career. Um, I don't know how long, um, I, you know, I'm going to go for a while for that. And um try to make a run for a couple of the big teams or world teams. And then after that, you know, probably get into um, my MMA career. You know, I signed with, uh, 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 I'm working on some things with some guys, so going to get into that, but focusing on wrestling right now, they told me that, Hey, wrestle as long as you got, as you want. And then whenever you're done, like we'll get into that, uh, uh, the other side of things after wrestling. Oh, that's cool. I, I love hearing that you're getting into MMA too. Um, and so uh, it sounds like there's some things in the works that we'll probably be hearing about pretty soon. Is that something that like you've, have you trained like MMA before? Have, have you like done any of that like over um, the last couple of years? No, I'm kind of growing up. My dad, uh, Mike fought, uh, used to fight growing up uh, in, you know, some UFC, um, getting into fighting. So I was around that. I got to you know, learn when he was training, like what to do, like what the can is going to be like. So I was always being around that. He always taught me also wrestling. Like we would, you know, stay after the gym sometime, me and Mike, and just strike, you know, practicing. Um, sometimes in practice we do jujitsu. And that's kind of like how I got my style, like of, uh, it's like a freestyle. Like I'm, I'm open to do whatever I want. I'm not afraid to make uh um, mistakes. I'm not afraid to go for things because, you know, you have to, sometimes you got to learn and, um, learn from that. So that's just how I grew up wrestling and, you know, it's been great. No, I love that. I love that. That's how you describe your style too, because like, that's how I see it. I mean, man, like so many times throughout just this past season, like, uh, I, the one that sticks out to me is the NC state match at the collegiate duels. <laughs> Um, when you were down in the match and, and just ended up battling back, coming back and ended up winning that um, just with the, with some of those crazy moves you were hitting. It was, it was entertaining to watch. So wow. like, w would you describe your like style of wrestling as entertaining? Yeah. I mean, growing up, that's how it was for me. Like um, my dad never wanted it to be like a, keep it like a one, two match. You know, um, he always described it as if you're boxing, what is that? one thing you're going for. Everybody wants to see that knockout punch. Like, so I always wanted to go out there and try to put on a show on for fans. You know, he told me 
going out there before Tulsa Nationals, going to the final and the finals, and he's like, "Look at all, look around, all these people paid to watch you wrestle. Like, go out there and put on a show for them." So kind of like that's why I like went out and wrestled. Is I'm gonna go out there and put on a show for everybody. I'm gonna make it entertaining. I wanna, you know, put a smile on everybody's face and have fun and love what I'm doing. No, that that's that's funny. That's because that's I was actually listening to a an interview from you from back in high school. I think it was after the state finals, and you were talking about a very similar thing. Like it was these people paid here for their tickets, and I want to give them a show. And you definitely have throughout your career, and uh, you know it's it's been entertaining to, to watch you. And there's already been some chats coming in here uh, that that are just super excited. Um, Kieran McGuire says that's going to be so entertaining seeing you fight in the in MMA. Uh, fire bugs AOZ says excited to see you, Jaden. And, and so, like, you have a lot of exciting fan support mm -hmm. from you, you know, from from Mizzou, and I'm sure that well, that obviously did follow you uh, to your time at, with the Iowa Hawkeyes. And so, I'm curious, like, uh, what was it like to be part of such a die hard fan base? This is actually a question that came in yesterday from Robert Lounsbury. He was like, he was asking about that, like mm -hmm. such a die hard fan base, you know, yeah, that, how, how was that? That fan base is awesome. Like they are some of the coolest fans I've ever seen in my life. And even after, like, even though I was only there for uh, two years, you know, really one year with fans, but my two years being here, like they made me feel like, like I was part of the family, like instantly. And, you know, they welcomed me as one of their own and they still like um, consider me like one of theirs. And that's what I love so much. Like when you're in that Carver arena, like they're, they're, they're coming at you. It's like, really, we're having like 11 guys on the team, like for our duel, because we have an extra whole stadium right there that's with us. And they're just on top of you screaming and they're getting in it and it's awesome. And it really does make a difference when you wrestle Carver arena. I promise like, People will talk about it, but until you really experience that, it's something you'll never feel in your life. Um, but the fans, like, um, you know, I'm living in Iowa City right now, and football is going on, and I'll be walking around going to the football game, and people are like, oh, Jaden, like, how's it been? Like, they still talk to me, asking to take pictures. So, like, the fans, like, I love them. Like, they're always going to hold a special place in my heart, and they're just, you know, the there's no other fan base like it in the world, I can be honest. No, that's so cool. Uh, I, I love hearing about that, especially as you're going to the you know football games, um, mm -hmm. because that, that's that's one of my was my one of my favorite parts about college. You know, I'd go to all the wrestling matches that I could, but going to the football games was just like uh, mm -hmm. another experience. It was just it was a blast, and it's mm -hmm. it's really cool that the fans are still coming up to you and you're taking pictures with them. Yeah. Uh, because you know, to, to, to them, like you are a celebrity, and which yeah. is really cool, and something that's like a little bit different about. Um, wrestling i think right is because yeah you, you have the senior level which is like really like i guess like unofficially the pro level of wrestling but really the highest level of folk style in our sport is at the college level so it's really cool to uh that the fans interact with you so much and that you enjoy it so much so as you went from mizzou to iowa uh because i'd imagine that mizzou had a pretty big fan base as well and pretty rabid fan base right so what were there any like culture differences that like you noticed whether whether from the fan base from within the program um, um, or even just from the big well I guess it wasn't the Big Twelve then but into the yeah. Big Ten itself. Um yeah I mean there's a I wouldn't say like yeah big difference like coming from a zoo like I know one duel we had like um I think it was against Oklahoma State we had three three to four thousand people for that duel in uh, Hearns Arena and then coming to Iowa, you have a sold out 20,000 people arena at Penn State versus Iowa and it's prime time, nighttime, and it's just, wow, like, whole oh, this is different. And, and you know, the, uh, there's some culture differences with, you know, just the schools too. Like, when I was at Mizzou, like, uh, you know, I'm all grateful for everything they ever did to me. But, like, mm -hmm. even, like, the school whole part, like, um, there would be, like, kind of sports that would, like, keep to themselves you know right and when i came to iowa i all these sports interact with each other like i'm friends with a lot of the football guys a lot of the baseball guys you know uh, a lot of the ba basketball guys i'm friends with a lot of soccer girls so like it's just we interact with each other really well here and it's like a really big family it feels like and that's what i love about this state and this school like 
everybody is really embracing everybody here for uh, who they are. And it doesn't matter what sport or if you're just a normal student too, like we just, you know, interact really well. That's neat to hear that the student athletes get along so much because like I, I hear stories that like other, you know, universities where the, the football team and the wrestling team don't get along or the basketball team and the wrestling team, whatever it is, it's just like, it's mm -hmm. almost like a feud. So that's really cool that you are able to get along, kind of hang out outside of, you know, sports and training or, or whatever it is on, on the weekend, whenever you, whenever you guys did actually have, you know, a little bit of time off. So that's really cool to hear about. Um, and you mentioned like the, the sold out arena, right. With Carver Hawkeye was the match, like matches against like Penn state, right. In Carver Hawkeye, did that like feel any different, like behind the scenes or getting ready for like a duel like that compared to, um, any other kind of big 10 duel or, or outside of the big 10? Like, was that different at all on a, on a night like that with, with it being such a huge <laughs> prime time event? Yeah, I mean, for me, it felt different. It felt like you were getting up for, you know, this is the biggest moment right now. Um, you know, we're getting ready. We walk into the arena. We're getting ready to do our cut weight, um, doing everything. We weigh in. Um, we're sitting down getting ready. Um, you know, Tom and Terry come up and talk to us before we go out there, giving us our, their speech. And, you know, we just go down there and you run out to that, lights out on the arena the flames going off and we're just running out there and it's prime time you know eight o'clock at night going off against number one and number two and it was just like felt like the biggest moment that everybody's wa waiting for in the uh, country yeah it, it absolutely was like i mean that that's my favorite night of the year right is watching penn state and iowa it's, it's been a dual meet i've always loved watching so yeah. it's really neat that you're able to be a part of that such that such an awesome environment uh and you know such an awesome team mm -hmm. so you know lo looking on some of your college careers like a as you were at mizzou like another big moment for you um or, or at least like as a fan looking in was whenever you beat yanni jock mahalas and you, you still stand as his only collegiate loss and so i'm curious like getting into kind of your headspace like is that still like a a cool like factoid for you or is that like is that a cool story to tell other people are you like is I that mean, like how do, how do you look at that yeah i mean it was you know if that happens i go down as the only person to beat him in college wrestling like yeah like that's something that's cool but like you know i didn't get the job done with the other times we wrestled and that was my big my what i wanted to do so kind of feel like he has the edge over me now like he he yeah, I was the one loss, but he got beat me these other times in the semifinals that uh, I should have beat him. So, um, you know, if that happens, um, you know, he had a hell of a career. Uh, he'll go down as one of the greats, but we had some battles, and I enjoyed it, and I can't wait to, for future battles, you know, with him. Um, Absolutely, yeah. We put on show for fans, and, you know, I'm hoping to do that for years to come. And I'm hoping to see that, too, because I, I know, like, watching – NCAAs like with my dad back a few years ago too it was like it's it's some of my it was it was one of our favorite matches to watch was you and Yanni like it, it was so exciting and um so I appreciate you sharing that insight into into the match there um so one of the questions that came in and I, I'm kind of curious about is like you talk about talk about a win there um that that was exciting um and, and maybe looking back on it it's it's even a, a bigger win because of what could happen uh with yanni potentially winning four titles mm -hmm. so i'm curious is there any win that sticks out to you as like man like that was one of my favorite wins throughout my college career um there's really four matches that stick out to me for biggest wins okay um one would be um beating joey mckenna for the blood round on my freshman year um it was a match that a lot of people you know didn't expect me to win and I remember walking at the uh, uh, that train station arena in St. Louis in 2016, I think it was, or no, 2017. And we're walking around and visiting everything. You know, it's a couple hours before the I have to get ready for the blood round. I'm just talking with my dad, and I remember going over and meeting, but uh, one of his friends that went to coaches at Harvard, and we're standing there, and I'm like. Oh yeah, I'm gonna beat your rival Stanford tonight in the blood round. And Mike looks at me and he's like, "All right, 
and you know we go out there and what i didn't know was my my dad actually he made a joke about uh made a joke about it later he's like yeah we canceled the room and all that because we didn't think you were gonna win like kind of joking with me after and making me feel like oh yeah we'll we'll see about that and you know i go out there and i just you know beat him 8-0 and you know that little joke and all that that we had with each other um kind of fuels it and it was just a great moment to make my first all-american you know um and then probably um one of the hardest fought matches that i liked was this year at florida against central michigan um you know i'm down 11 to 1 and i had to battle back and it just was a hard fought gritty win and I had to put my head down and just do the work to get it done. And it might have not been so pretty, but to me, like knowing that I could battle back like that made it that much like sweeter to me. Absolutely. Like <laughs> that's what I was talking about earlier. Like th those collegiate duels were like so fun to watch mm -hmm. for me. Like your, your matches especially stick out in my head. So I like hearing that that's like one of your like exciting matches that, that sticks out to you from, from your career and from this past season. Sure. And so, you know, as, as now you're, you're out of college, um, but you're still hanging around in, in Iowa, right. With training with the Hawkeye wrestling mm -hmm. club. And you see a lot of these newer guys coming in and, and training, um, and is there anybody that like sticks out to you or that you've been able to train with, get your hands on that, like, has been like, you're kind of excited to see compete this season, whether it's, you know, real transferring in, like, have, have you been able to train with him or, um, any of the new, like freshmen, is there anybody that like sticks out that you're, you're super excited to see, uh, hit the mat this season? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I still got, I think, uh, two more months until I can start drilling again. So I'm just on the outside, just biking and running. Um, you know, probably won't start going live till December, but, you know, talking with the new guys coming in, meeting with all this, uh, the whole, the new team, uh, talking with real woods, you know, these guys are awesome. These, this team is going to be something special. And I don't think anybody should write out Iowa coming up this year because yeah, there's a lot of firepower that's coming into it. You know, you're returning the national finalist, uh, Jacob Warner, you're bringing back Spencer Lee, like that's going to go out there and just dominate everybody and go for a bonus, bonus, bonus. Um, you got Cassio be going back stronger than ever. You know, um, you have um, Nelson Brands getting back healed up and getting ready to go. You know, you got Patrick Kennedy coming in. Like, all these new guys and uh, veterans that are coming back, like, it's going to be a great team that's going to be uh, put on the mat. And they're going to be uh, a rec uh, force to be reckoned with coming March. Yeah, you better believe it. I mean, anybody who's writing off Iowa right now is is – crazy man like we, we know the penn state has some firepower but iowa has just as much firepower i'm super excited to see you know spencer as he goes for uh his fourth title especially because like the first nationals i was ever at was whenever spencer won his first title and, and i've i've i'm from pennsylvania myself from western pa my high school battled against uh against his high school at Franklin regional and, and Kemmerer's. And it's like really cool to see his career progress. So I'm hoping to, you know, see him win his, his fourth title this year. And the, the firepower behind the Hawkeyes this year is just obviously su super yeah. exciting to see what the team can do. Uh, and so with that, you know, you mentioned like some, some, maybe some people talking online. There, there's always people chirping, you know, on, on Twitter or, or Instagram or whatever it is. And, and sometimes they just make me laugh just because yeah. of the stuff that they say. Right. Like sure. how, how often do you like, do you even pay attention to that stuff? Like, does that like, especially during the season or like, does that, does that bother you or the teammate, your teammates? Um, I mean, not really. Like, it's sometimes, like, we just look at it and we just kind of joke with it. Like, we take it with a kind of lighthearted soul. Like, yeah, ha, 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 that's so funny. Like, but um, there's some things that will, like, yeah, like, cool. Or I just won't pay attention to it, you know. Try to do as much as not to look at it. Um, get on as much as social media, you know. Uh, stay off it for the season. But, you know, it's it's part of the sport. They're going to chirp. That's how it is. And, you know, I let people talk and I just, you know, do what I came to do. Like, I'm, it's just wrestling, you know, go out there and shake hands with another opponent and that's it. Like, there's no need to do whatever that's going on. So, you know, it's just all lighthearted. Make the sport a better place and, you know, make it more fun, I guess. Uh, kind of brings a new 
thing to wrestling when people chirp and all that. So, you know, it was, it was interesting to see. You get, you get a lot of heart, hate for being a Hawkeye, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You definitely do. <laughs> and that's just so fun to hear. You, you, you have like that rabid fan base and support behind you, but you also have so many haters online mm -hmm. in the message boards or on social media. And that's like the funny thing, too, is like nowadays with social media, like you have to be on it to build your brand. And it, it's like, I'm sure it's tough to, to handle that. Like, you're building your brand on social media. And so you're definitely going to see some of these things, but you also, I'm sure like don't want to get distracted by it with, with your schoolwork and with wrestling and all this other stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely like just, it's, it's a whole different world. Yeah. And uh, I, I have just one more question for you uh, before we get into some of this chat um, and make, make sure everybody that, that you're submitting the questions in the chat so we can get to, Jaden's going to take a couple minutes to answer them at the end of this show. Uh, we see Jackson Cruz in the chat right now. Uh, he says, that he, that's your cut. Is that he your cousin? Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, it's, it's awesome to have you in the chat, Jaden. Uh, Spanky says, Iron Man is one of the funkiest wrestlers of all time. And that is for sure, without a doubt, um, definitely going to miss the funk in college, but excited to see it in freestyle and in MMA because Daniel was asking, is, is he going to MMA? I missed that. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he kind of alluded to that, that. That's the plan maybe in the future is to go into MMA and I'm excited to see where that goes to. So it's, it's awesome to see all these chats coming in, make sure you're keeping them as we get into the last couple questions. And so, one of the things, Jaden, that I actually learned about you this morning um, was that, and I, I don't, I, it's it's crazy that I learned about it this morning. But man, like your last name was not always Ironman. You've dealt with a, a couple names throughout your career, right? You, Clayton was your original last name. Then you took the last name Ironman to uh, kind of honor your coach and, and your dad, and uh, and then of course you go by the Riddler. So. First, I'm curious, like changing changing your last name. You know, why was that so important to you? So, um, kind of a long story. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, my dad and mom, my biological father and my mom were never really married. They never got married, and um, kind of really wasn't a part of my life that much. And that's when Mike kind of came in. When Mike Ironman came in when I was seven, he started coaching at uh, the club I was at. And him and my mom started dating. Um, they dated all the way up until I was in high school, and then they split. But, like, I was – Mike raised me like he, I was his own son for so many years. And after even they split up, I was still, like, considered him as my dad because my biological father uh, passed away when I was a freshman in college. So when I turned 18 – um, I kind of, you know, took uh, Mike Iron's last name because I felt like, you know, he was my, that father figure role to me. And even though him and my mom are still not together, like I still consider him my dad. And so, you know, it's just something to give to him as, you know, respect. Like I, I feel like he's something special to me. And not a lot of people know that in life. Um, yeah, me and Mike, like we're not really related, but he's that dad that father figure that i've always um been with me since i was seven eight uh six years old wow that, that's incredible and you see some comments coming in that it's a big honor to him to mike and like i've never heard of such a you know mm -hmm. a big honor to somebody to take on their last name and um man that, that's just such a cool story and i appreciate you sharing yeah. that here on the show know, raised me since like i was his own son even though i wasn't and I would go to Christmases with him. So I met, I'm so close with the whole family. You know, uh, my uncle, Mike's brother, Tony, coached me in high school. So like that, he was like an uncle to me. You know, I'm close with everybody. My cousin, Jeremy, plays uh, in the MLB for the uh, Oakland A's. So like I, I've just grown really close to that family as part of like, you know, as my dad's. Wow. Uh, wow. That, that's, that's really neat, man. Um, really neat story to hear and again i appreciate you for sharing that um it, it somebody commented yesterday like before we're getting on the show and said mike had mike had coached askrin and mm -hmm. cox so he was a pretty big influence on their styles mm -hmm. so he mike coached at uh mizzou 
um, was the uh, volunteer assistant. So he coached uh, Max Askren, Ben Askren, um, was around with Mike because I was always there, you know, up there with him. Uh, got to meet Michael Chandler, Matt Pell, uh, Tyron Woodley. Like I was close with that whole team that was growing up, uh, Mark Ellis. And so watching him work out with those guys, given him and Ben would just thrive together. You know, and then me and Jaden Cox growing up, little kids grew, uh, wrestling in the club together and then, you know, growing up into high school and college together. So it was we were right there with Mike and he's one of the greatest gems in wrestling that really no one knows about. And he's like a sacred gem that really should be taken advantage of. No, that's so cool. Like that, that's why I appreciated, you know, I, I saw that comment yesterday and like it stuck out to me to w- want to do a little bit more like research into that. So that's really, really cool um, that he is such a gem and that he's been such an influence on, on those guys and on you. So that that's really neat. And we're going to go into a couple minutes of questions here now, Jaden. Um, and like that, that is one of the questions that somebody asked is, the biggest influence in your style. So is, was the mic a big influence in your style? And were there other guys who you think kind of that, that maybe you watched or emulated, uh, whether that were older than you international curious yeah. about that? Um, yeah, Mike was a big influence. He never told me no when wrestling, like I would be like, Oh, like what happens if they do this and get in this position? Like he would tell me to explore it and try to think of new ways to score, you know? Um, because what if you do get in that position, you got to learn how to score it. And then he would just have me watch, uh, you know, Gustavo Yarsity of, um, he's like, you got to learn how to wrestle like a Russian. You got to learn how to have the style of Terry and Tom Brands. You got to learn how to have the style of, you know, John Smith and Kale Sanderson. So it was like pulling everything from each person and m- trying to mold me into one as to, you have to have a, be a well-rounded wrestler. You can't just be, you know, good offensive and not a good defensive. You got to have, you know, the best of everything. No, that's, that's cool. Uh, that, that you're, you're spot on with that. And so, I mean, it, it's great to see that that's where your influence kind of came from. Um, and we, we see one from Matt Rudd that says, we miss you at Mizzou, Mizzou, but at least you were still in the black and gold. So that's awesome, Matt. Um, yeah, it was, it was great to see Jaden in the black and gold for the Hawkeyes. Uh, a couple of fun ones for you, Jaden. Uh, first one, you know, we talked about the different names that you had, but one of the ones is, is the Riddler. Where did you get that nickname? Um, I remember it was before the U S open or going into college season. And I remember it was on the flow and I was like, Riddle me this, can the can Ironman beat Yanni and kind of kind of took over the Riddler name. I was thinking about it. I'm like, kind of makes sense. Like if you don't really have the answer to the riddle or the answer to my style, it's gonna, you know, cost you big. So that's kind of just, you know, it stuck with me because it kind of fit fit pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> and so the name was born. Is it is that one that like if you go into MMA, UFC, like is that and the nickname you'd like to carry on through that? We'll see, you know, I'll, I'll figure out what fits well with me going into that stuff and, you know, whatever it goes. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe there's a new nickname that pops out that, uh, that fits your style more for MMA. So that, that's really cool to hear. Um, and a- another fun one for you, uh, two stroke forever asks, Hey Jaden, what's your favorite car and or manufacturer? Are you into cars? Yeah. Um, you know, I have a Jeep right, Wrangler right now. Um, growing up, um, me and my dad had a 19, I think we had a 1971, uh, Stingray T-top Corvette. Um, so like, I love those old cars. My, probably my favorite car of all time will be a 1967, uh, fastback. Cool. Cool. Cool, man. Uh, that's, that's awesome that you're driving, you're a Jeep man. <laughs> so yeah. do you, do you enjoy the, uh, kind of off-roading a bit with that? Um, not really. I don't want to take it off road because it's not like, you know, put a lot into it yet. Um, you know, got to put a lot into it if you're going to go off road. And so I'm just, you know, take the doors off and like to just drive around in the country and listen to music, go around. Um, me and my friends will go downtown and we'll play like kind of funny music just to mess with people, like make us look like idiots. But I'm sure you got a lot of country music blaring. Yeah. <laughs> in the Jeep. I, I can imagine it now. Yeah. Uh, it cracks, that, that cracks me up. And 
like I actually had a friend who had a Jeep as well. And it was like the most ma maintained Jeep that is out there. And everybody would like get on him. He's like, they're like, man, you got to take that off road. And you got to take that off road. And like, what's the point of having a Jeep if you're not off road? But mm -hmm. it's just cool to, to take the, take the doors off windows down, whatever it is and uh, cruise along. And so Jaden, I think a, a great way to end this is uh, MSPI orange ass. Whenever you have your own kids, if that's something that you do one day, um, what are some of those lessons that, that you've learned from Mike, from your other coaches that you would like to maybe pass on as well to them? Are there any like lessons that have like stuck with you throughout the years? Mm -hmm. The biggest one that Mike has always like passed on to me was it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And that's how I kind of keep my living my life is no matter where you're at or no matter where you're, what you're doing, you know, if you're kind of starting slow or not doing the best that you can, you can always finish strong and, you know, get to where you want to be and achieve the best that you can do. So that's kind of like how I live. My motto is it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And, you know, if I've had matches where I, I have that motto, you know, the Yanni match, I started slow and, you know, just finished it strong in the end. And it's just, that's the biggest thing that I will always live with. I, you know, I have it tattooed on my chest, so I'll pass that on. It's, you know, you just have to finish life strong. Wow. So cool. So powerful of a message to share, you know, from, from Mike and, you know, to everybody who's in wrestling or just in life, right. It, it's, it's a great lesson to share. And, and I'm, you know, sure one that you will pass on to your kids should you have kids one day. Uh, so I appreciate your insights, Jaden. It's been so uh, incredible talking to you about your college career and what's next in your career. Uh, if people want to follow along with you, what's the best place uh, to follow along with your upcoming steps in the career? Um, best way to follow me would probably be on Instagram. Um, you know, J Ironman 65 kilograms and, you know, everything will be coming soon, you know, getting ready to get back into wrestling and, you know, what happens after that. Awesome. And though, though the, your wrestling career may be finished, there's a bright future ahead for you. I'm excited to see as you head into the future of freestyle and MMA and whatever else lies in your path. Thanks again to Jaden Ironman for being on the show tonight for the Fanker Wrestling Show. My name is Josiah, and I'll see you next week.